God will not leave your soul destitute in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God heard everything you said to him went to his ears. He heard everything that you petitioned him for and he wants you to know that he will not leave you destitute. He wants you to know that you are not forsaken. Dear child of God, he wants you to know that you are not left all by yourself to struggle alone. He will come to your rescue. He will deliver you because you trust in him, because your faith and because your confidence are upon him. God wants you to know that he is coming to your rescue and you would have reasons to rejoice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Dear child of God, please do not keep your mouth shut. The word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So say it today that God is turning towards my direction and he will set me free. God is turning towards my direction and today will be the end of my challenge. Today will be the end of my problems. Today will be the end of all the situations that I've experienced. Dear child of God, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God is turning towards your direction and it will turn everything around for good for you and for your family. In Jesus' mighty name, it is settled. You shall overcome. You shall rise in victory and you shall be celebrated. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Do not be afraid because it is your time to experience an upliftment from the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Are you saying to God right now, consider mine enemies for they are many and they hate me with cruel hatred. Is that what you are saying to God right now? Please consider my enemy. God wants you to know that everything that you have spoken to him, yes, you are taking them into account and is going to bring every of your enemies to book in Jesus mighty name. Good news dear child of God, every of those enemies, every of those haters, every of those people that have been too strong for you to handle, God wants you to know today that he will take care of each and every one of them. He would handle them in the way and manner is so fit in the name of Jesus. God is ready to stand for you and the way he deems it fit, he will do in the mighty name of Jesus. There is no one like your God. There is no rock like our rock. Dear child of God, the Lord wants you to know today that everything you told him about all that you had experienced, he has taken them into account and today he would act on your behalf in Jesus' mighty name. David was sincere. He said to God, For they are many and they hate me. Dear child of God, they may be many that hate you. There may be many that seem too strong for you to handle. God wants you to know today, dear child of God, that is considering each and every one of them. And if they refuse to repent, they would begin to receive the recompense of all of their evils today. And it will continue until all of them are gone from you in Jesus' mighty name. Dear child of God, good news. The things that may have afflicted you, the things that caused you to be afraid, God is saying to you, I'm looking into them. I'm looking into everything. And I would make sure you experience a deliverance, a change, and you shall be delivered in Jesus' mighty name. The psalmist said to God in Psalms 141 verse 8, But my eyes are unto thee, O God the Lord. In thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. And God made sure he was not forsaken. God made sure he was not left at the mercy of the devil. Dear child of God, God made sure he was not given over to the enemies that wanted him destroyed. God wants you to know today that your eyes and his eyes have connected and is going to rescue you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, as you looked up unto him, you also looked towards your direction and he wants you to know today that you shall be uplifted. He wants you to know today that he will set you free. You shall be delivered 
and you shall testify of the Lord's goodness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Dear child of God, good news. You shall not be left to be destroyed. You shall not be left all by yourself to be at the mercy of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will cause you to triumph. Dear child of God, God will cause you to triumph. This is a good news to you, dear child of God. You are not forsaken. It doesn't matter those who are speaking to you. It doesn't matter what the enemies are whispering to you. It doesn't matter what the devil is saying. God has not left you. Yes, they may be telling you God has forsaken you. It is all lies from the pit of hell, dear child of God. Good news. You will overcome. You will overcome all the things that the enemies are doing to crush you. And you will rise in victory. You will rise in victory. You will rise in victory in Jesus' mighty name. It shall be settled for you and for your family and you will know that you are no longer a destitute. Does it look like you are all by yourself? Does it look as though you are at this point desolate and you are asking God to turn to you? You are asking God to show you his mercy. You are asking God to redeem you. God wants you to know today dear child of god that it will turn towards your direction i have a good news for you today dear child of god god is turning to your direction and it would make sure all the help that you need he will make sure all the assistance that you need he would make sure all the aid that you need will be coming your way in jesus mighty name good news dear child of god god will redeem you god will make sure you are redeemed and you are set free in jesus mighty name he said in psalms 25 verse 16 turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me for i am desolate and afflicted he said redeem me verse 22 O god out of all my troubles and god responded god showed up and God redeemed him. Dear child of God, good news. God is showing up. He's showing up on that matter. Dear child of God, God is showing up. You will see his hand. You will see his touch. You will see his deliverance in the name of Jesus. He says, but God always helped those. He says, God always helped those that he has chosen to be his children when they continue to ask him for help. He says, when they continue to ask him for help, he will answer them immediately, he says, he will not wait. Dear child of God, don't go once and stop. He says, won't God grant his chosen people justice when they cry out to him day and night? Is he slow to help them? This is the word of God, dear child of God. He says, we should go continually to God. He says, will God not avenge his own elect that cry to him day and night that would not stop that would not relent. Dear child of God, please, is this faith still found in your life? Because you say, I say to you that he will quickly do right in their cause. But when the Son of Man comes, would there be any faith on the earth? He says, yes, he will give them justice quickly. But would he find such people, such people of God, such a Son of Man, such a woman of God, who had made up their mind to stay in the place of prices? Would I find such faith in the earth? People who still believe in the power of prayer. People who still believe in the power of communion. You see, prayer is more than a communication with God. Prayer is more than you laying your petitions before God. Prayer is beyond you coming to say all the things that are in your heart, the things that have burdened you, the things that have given you on rest. Dear child of God, prayer is more than those. Prayer is more like a fellowship. It's more like a communion. It's a time to love upon God because in that time there are many things you can do with your master. There are many things you can do with your lover, which is God. There are many things you can do with the one who has betrothed you. But when you go to God once and then nothing happens, you go the next time and nothing happens, then you go again and nothing happens, you think that God is unfair to you. You think that God doesn't listen to the cry of his children. You think that God doesn't want to answer you. Forgetting that God also wants to spend time with you. God wants to have that moment of intercourse with you. God wants to have that moment that it would pleasure. Yes, it would have pleasure from you. 
You see, we have been created in His image. We have been created to give Him pleasure. And God also wants to be pleased. Just like you want satisfaction in your life. Just like you want those things to be done with. You see, there are some people when the Lord answers them, you will not find them in the place of prayer. There are two reasons people don't go to God anymore. It's either they have gotten the things that they want from God and would not go to Him anymore. But those people who have not gotten it and they felt disappointed, they felt dejected and walk away from God. Dear child of God, don't let this be your lifestyle. Don't let this be the attitude that you have. Make up your mind. Say to him, I'll go to you regardless. You see, sometimes this is what God is expecting from us. Knowing that he has found people who are the people of his heart. People who will say like David, seven times a day I pray. He said, three times a day I go to the place of prayer. I go to the place of worship. Dear child of God, he continually did this and God was pleased with him. God found a man that would be close to his heart because he never ever joked with the presence of God. Remember the word of God in Psalm 16 verse 11. He says, that will show me the path of life. He says, for in his presence is pleasures forevermore. He says, in his presence is the fullness of joy. He says, in his presence, in his right hand, you would have pleasures forevermore. See in Luke 18, the scripture says, would God not attend to those who call him night and day who called him night and day he was making that reference jesus was speaking and making that reference to that woman who went to the judge and continually went to the judge until the judge attended to her she did not stop she kept on going she never relented and jesus would say how much more how much more my god how much more would he do to those who call him night and day you see when jesus was speaking about the story in luke 18 in verse 1 he says and he made a story for them the point of which was that men were to go to god on making prayer and not get tired this is the word of god this is the words of jesus he says that the point he was making was that men should go to god making prayers and not get tired he says, and he made a story for them. The point of which was that men were to go to God on making prayer and not get tired. He said men ought to pray and not to faint. That was what he was saying. He says about prayer, it is important we do it over and over again and never give up. This is the word of God. He told the disciples a parable about the need to continually pray about the need to love the place of prayer he says we should go there times and times again and never give up then he cited that example then he cited that scenario of that woman of the widow who went to the judge now this judge had no fear for god this judge have no respect for man but yet because she was insistent because she would continually go because she would not stop she wearied that judge because she would not stop she kept on going over and over again and then the judge who was not having any fear for god the judge who doesn't even respect man would respond to her he says because this widow is a trouble to me i will give her a right for if not i'll be completely tired by her frequent coming he says, if not, I would be completely tired out by a frequent coming. And then he says, Father, and the Lord who is in heaven, and the Lord who gives yes to his children, and the Lord who gives attention to us more than any man would, he says, would they not do more? Dear child of God, did you speak to God? Did you go to God to air your petitions? Did you go to God to pour your heart? Did you go to God for him to change your situation and it seems like nothing changed? Dear child of God, I want to tell you today, go again. Go again. You've prayed, you've spoken to God and it seems like you did not respond. It seems like nothing is happening. Please go again. 
go again. You see, the scripture says that we should pray without season. The scripture says that we should go to him unendingly. We should continually go to him. You see, the first thing we must realize is that prayer is a fellowship. Prayer is more than making a request. Prayer is the time to commune with the one you love. Prayer is the time to commune with your creator. So if you have always gone to God only because of the things you are expecting to receive in your life, you have not done enough justice. You have not done enough justice, dear child of God, to this wonderful mystery that God made available to us, this channel of reaching Him. You see, many times you've spoken to God and it seems like you did not get a response. That shouldn't stop you from going again. There are people who have walked away from the place of prayer. There are people who no longer commune with God because it seems like nothing is happening. Because it seems like God is not paying attention to them. But I want you to know today that God doesn't expect us to come once and then he would not find us again. It means there is no relationship. So when you have gone to God and it seems like nothing happened, dear child of God, I want to advise you today, don't allow that to be the reason why you should stop. Dear child of God, you see, God wants you to be in his presence, not just for him, but for the things you are going to receive. Dear child of God, God wants your life blissful. Dear child of God, God wants you transformed. God wants to see that he has a reflection of himself in your life. You see, when Jesus went to the place of prayer, the scriptures recorded that his fashion was altered. Everything about his raiment changed and it was glistering. The child of God, there was a level of brightness that came from Jesus just appearing in the presence of God. And no wonder David said that they grow from strength to strength, appearing before the presence of God. Their wisdom will continually increase. Their character will begin to change. Their nature will begin to become much more beautiful even in the sight of men the people that saw it were marveled you see moses would go into the presence of god he went there over and over again until everything about his life began to reflect the glory of god everything about his life began to show really the personality of god you see the reason god wants us to come continually in his presence the reason god wants us to come talking to him every time is because he wants to make the better person out of our lives. He wants to make the best out of us. So you must know today that prayer will not only change your situation, that prayer will not only change that predicament you find yourself in, that prayer will not only change that thing you have been going to God to bring a change in, but also prayer will change you. Dear child of God, listen to this again. Prayer would change you. Prayer doesn't change only your situation, but it changes you. It brings out that character that God can use to send forth to the ends of the earth, saying, this is the one in whom I'm well pleased in. This is the man, this is the woman I have made after my own heart. So when you have to go to God insistently, please continually go to God. Not because of the request that you have, not because of the petitions, you are presenting before him, but because you want to commune, because you want to spend time in his presence. He says, pray without season. He says, pray without end. Dear child of God, please know it today that we ought to pray and not to faint. We ought to pray and never to get tired of praying. Make this your lifestyle. Make this the nature that you carry. Make this the lifestyle that you want God to see. And I want to assure you, you will see something distinguishing about your life because God cherishes those people that love his presence. I pray for you the blessings of the presence of God. Dear child of God, that situation is settled. Dear child of God, that affliction is gone. Dear child of God, that situation will see the end today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God has turned towards your direction and everyone that God had looked towards have always experienced a deliverance. And I want to tell you today, dear child of God, yours will not be an exception. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Good news. You will be redeemed. You'll be redeemed from everything. And your testimony will be led there redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it today because so shall it be. You will tell the people around you, God redeemed me. You will tell the people around you today, God saved me. You will tell the people around you today, God settled my life. He said in Psalms 18 verse 48, He delivered me from my enemies. Yea, thou lifted me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Dear child of God, God is delivering you. God is delivering you from those violent enemies. God is delivering you from that violent situation. Yes, that situation that was almost destroying you. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are no longer forsaken, dear child of God. God will hold you by the hand and will raise you up to the place you are supposed to be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I call it done because it is settled and you shall testify in Jesus' name. God will deliver you. I will not just deliver you. He would make sure you are uplifted. He would make sure you are promoted. He would make sure that everyone that wanted you down will see you at the top in the name of Jesus. When God turned the story around for Joseph, the people that wanted him destroyed, the people, yes, his brothers, the people that hated him and wanted his life to end, all they would see was to see him at the top. All they would see was to see that he was uplifted and he was above them all. Dear child of God, this is how God will do for you in Jesus' mighty name. God will raise you up. He will place you above them all in Jesus' mighty name. And this is how your life would experience a breakthrough that you have waited for for a long time in Jesus' name. I call it done because it is settled and you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' mighty name. The enemies cannot succeed over your life again. Never again would they succeed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It is well with you, beloved. God bless you and shalom.